Hi everyone, Amy here, and today I'm going to watercolor with my stencil. So let's jump right in. Now this stencil that I'm showing you is a brand spankin' new stencil from the July 2022 release at A Colorful Life Designs. It's called Spinning Lines, and I do have it coated pretty liberally with some pixie spray. And I'm going to attach it down here onto a piece of watercolor paper. Um, you can see I'm just lining it up and then I'm gonna press it down really good with my brayer. Now you may be able to get away with this technique without pixie spray, um, but I wouldn't recommend it. I think you'll get a better look um, if you're able to use the pixie spray. But absolutely, if you wanna give it a go, it's just paper, have some fun, give it a try. I think I've made it work before without it, but um, since I have pixie spray, I think it's definitely ideal. Now here's a photo of the finished card. You can see this is actually watercolor um, and it came together pretty quickly once it dried. But I have my Magello Mission Gold watercolors here. I haven't played with these in a while, so I thought I would bust them out. But guys, I absolutely love this technique and it always surprises me how well it works. So if you haven't tried it before, um, I definitely recommend it. It's just a fun way to use your watercolors a little differently and your stencils a little differently. So I have a mason jar of some clean um, water and a kind of a fat watercolor brush. I have some paper towel here to just kind of, you know, dab off my brush as I switch colors. But I'm just going to grab a few colors um, of watercolor and kind of get them ready to go on my palette before I apply them directly to the watercolor. So um, this is a really, really fun technique, um, especially with these intricate stencils, you would think that, you know, it wouldn't work, but when you use the pixie spray, it really does create that barrier uh, between the stencil and the watercolor paper. So it really does kind of help you maintain that detail from the stencil, and it's always just such a wowza effect. So you can see I do have some um, watery kind of consistency here, but it's still quite pigmented. And I'm just kind of laying that down on the first part of the stencil. You can see there's some extra little balls of watercolor um, kind of around the stencil, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's well stuck on with that pixie spray. So I'm just going to move on to the next color here. Um, I don't really have a plan. I'm just kind of gravitating towards the colors that <laughs> I often gravitate towards, like I think many of us do. Um, we go for the colors that we like. Um, so I've got similar consistency here, still nice and pigmented, but definitely um, a little bit more liquid. And then I'm going to kind of let the pink and the blue blend together. Um, that's the beauty of watercolor. You just kind of let it do its own thing. Um, if you leave it be, see like, like here, it just kind of blended in. If you're if you're very particular um, and very concise, then watercolor may not be your jam, but I personally love the messiness of it. I kind of love the unpredictability of it. Um, I think it creates a really fun finished look, especially when you just leave it be um, to kind of blend with itself and move around and, and dry back naturally. So, um, you can see it's very vibrant in color here, but as you saw in the picture, it does dry back much lighter. Um, that is standard with watercolors. It's always going to be richer in color when you're first playing with it, and then it'll dry back lighter, um, as it kind of dries onto the paper. So just coming in with this purple color here, again, blending it into the blue, um, kind of taking my time, and then I let it just sit a minute. You don't have to let it sit all that long but you do want to give the paper a chance to kind of absorb the water and the paint and here you can see I'm just I have it sped up a little bit but I'm kind of slowly removing if I would have started at the top at this point I think it wouldn't have flinged those little triangle bits and it may have been a little bit neater on the top so maybe with this particular stencil pull from the bottom and then also from the top and just try and pull straight upward if you can I know it's not really always an option but here I'm just going to use the residual um, ink that's or watercolor that's left over on it and see if I can get a mono print and I knew it would be eh, a little lackluster but whatever I had a little extra panel there so I thought I'd not waste the watercolor here and I do end up kind of bringing in the the palette here again and just adding some extra color because I figure even if it's just like a light 
whatever background like this, I can either stamp something with like a stark black, like silhouette kind of stamp on it for a background, or I could even die cut out, you know, some fat letters or something like that out of it. So I'll throw it in my box with, you know, other backgrounds. And it was actually at this point um, that I spilled the water all over my entire desk and saturated that panel further. So you'll see in a moment, um, once it's dried back, it's a lot lighter than <laughs> than I initially had it. And that's because I just spilled water all over my desk. Go me. Um, but anyway, they dried back beautifully and I'm going to use my stitched edge rectangle die just to kind of cut this down a little bit smaller than A2 size. And then the additional benefit of this is running it through the die cutting machine will help kind of flatten it out a little bit because, you know, with any watercolor paper, or any paper that you introduce water to, you're likely to have some sort of warpage. So I'm just going to use some mint tape here and attach this stitched edge rectangle die, run it through my die cutting machine, and you can see I attached it to the card base. So it's got a nice white border. And now I just have to choose my sentiment. So I'm shopping my sentiment book here, my baseball card um, pockets here that store all my die cuts. And I'm just kind of looking for something to kind of fill that negative space. So I've got different options here. I could do the wish, the hooray, these little perfect sentiments from Pink Fresh here that I'll come up on in a minute, those would probably work in the space. So just kind of trying to feel, get a feel for what I want um, in this design. But you could also leave it blank and just have it ready to go if you're not sure what type of card you want it to be. Um, but this is just kind of my, my process here. I kind of pick the little pieces parts and I have this, yay, it's your birthday sentiment. This is from... Um, LDRS Creative. I recently got these strips. They're really cool. They come in one stamp and one die and kind of cut it all cut it all out in one go. So I have a bunch of these strips ready. Um, they're called Stack Sentiments, Stacked Sentiments or something like that. Um, I will link them in the video description box below with all the other available products that I used. So if you expand that description box and scroll down, then you'll find those details. But I'm just using some liquid glue to kind of lay down this hooray. And you can see it is pretty thick. I do have some different layers stacked together. So it's almost like, I don't know, like a chipboard thickness. So I thought that was kind of cool um, with it being white on white like that, but it still kind of stands out enough to be visible. So just adding some pretty blingage here. This is some iridescent sequins. And I'm going to lay them down in odd numbers around the design um, with some liquid glue in my jewel picker. And that's pretty much going to be the design. I'm just keeping it simple here, letting the beautiful watercolor take center stage. Um, but this is just such a fun technique that I often forget about using. So bust out those watercolors, bust out your stencils, get some pixie spray and go to town. So really fun technique. I absolutely enjoy doing this. So be sure to check out the rest of the release. Um, the July release is full of awesome geometric stencils like this, which are great for masculine or gender neutral type of cards. So I appreciate you watching. Please hit the thumbs up and I'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.